married or in a committed relationship, looking for real advice on having love and enriching your relationship, you are in the right place. Welcome to The Couples Expert with Stuart Fensterheim. Hi, everyone. Thank you again for joining me on my Couples Expert podcast here, where I get to do one of the things that I love doing the most, which is sharing my expertise on helping couples have an incredibly close, emotionally close relationship. And what's even more exciting is I'm doing this the week right after Valentine's Day. And I want to really have all of you do me a really big favor, which is if you had a special Valentine's Day, if your partner did something that really had you feeling loved and more connected than you normally do, would you please send me an email at podcast at thecouplesexperts.com because I would love to compile a list of different things that people did so that as a community, we really can help each other. That guide, that support that this community offers to one another can really be incredibly valuable because we all want, I really do believe, we all want to be able to do things that are going to hit the mark of our partners, where they truly feel loved. And if as a community, we begin to talk and interact about that, about things that we each do, because we all do things every single day to try to help our partners feel special. So if we can bring together a list, and I would love to have a list of different things that people do throughout the year that really help their partners feel special. And then maybe we can compile this list that all of you can have that give you the ideas. Because sometimes a little idea spurs something that can really help your partner in your marriage, in your partnership. The other thing I really wanted to share is I just got back from a podcasting conference in Orlando. And one of the things that always happens for me is that when I go somewhere else and then come back to my hometown, I went without my wife, you really begin to recognize that your life is really special and that my marriage to my wife, Debbie, is so incredibly special because I noticed that so much more, it's really a shame We notice these things so much more when we're away. And then when we come back and we haven't been with our partners, we really can look around, we see people, we see couples, and we begin to do some self-reflection. And I'm really fortunate that when I do those things now, it hasn't always been this way, but when I do that now, I really feel like we've done our part to helping each other feel important to one another, and that most every day, not every day, but most every day, I know I'm with that one person that loves me more than this. And that's really what this podcast is going to be about, because what I'm going to do is I've had this question for a while. People know that I am a couples counselor, and I use a model called emotionally focused therapy. EFT, or emotionally focused therapy, is an attachment-based model. And what I'm going to try to do is is lay out for all of you what's unique about EFT and why, in my opinion, if you're seeking out help and you're seeking out help for your relationship, which is the most important relationship in your life, if you seek help from a couples counselor that doesn't use an attachment-based model don't do it. That is a question that you will need to ask every counselor that you meet. If you're talking about your relationship, you want to ask them, what is their theoretical model? If they don't tell you that they use an attachment-based model to help couples, do not seek out their help. Because what that will tell you is that they are not a specialist in working with couples. There are people who are counselors who really don't understand the uniqueness of working with a couple. And what ends up happening is they get caught up into the same cycles that the two of you are. And before you know it, you're having a conversation 
that looks like this. Ma'am, I really think you need to change your behavior because your behavior is causing a problem for your husband or vice versa. If you ever have anyone in your counseling that is choosing whose behavior is better or worse than the other and whether or not the behavior is creating the problem, they don't understand couples' relationships and that the enemy of every single marriage is the lack of emotional connection. It is not the behavior. And that behavior is symptomatic. And underneath the behavior is really where we need to get to. So what I'm going to lay out for all of you today is really what EFT is. In terms of attachment-based models, there really are two major ones that I have come across. And those two are the ones that I would suggest that you need to see a counselor that is trained on one of these two models. One is called emotionally focused therapy, as you guys know, that's mine. And the other is John Gottman, or the Gottman method, is another attachment-based model that I have seen incredibly positive results for, and actually utilize at times some of the concepts and principles and some of the techniques that he uses. Those are the two models that I would like you to think about. So what exactly is EFT? EFT, or Emotionally Focused Therapy, is a modality that has the foundation is that we define relationship problems as a lack of emotional connection or emotional closeness. I talk a lot about EFT and the question that a lot of people ask themselves is, is my partner truly here for me? If I call, will they come? If I have a need, will my partner be invested in satisfying that need that will allow me to then feel close to my partner? The other thing to really keep in mind, and one of the unique qualities of EFT, is that it's an experiential approach to counseling. So it allows a unique opportunity for a counselor like me to help people work through this distress and the trauma in a safe place. And that safe place is in my office. When we apply these techniques, it's really to help reprocess and reframe, look at differently, the negative patterns that get created. And we want to look at how each person relates to that destructive pattern. So it really is about, we have to understand the internal dialogue. What happens to you when you are triggered? And I've talked a lot about being triggered. So when something happens, and I like to use the example, and it's sort of a comical one, and we all use this sometimes, forgive me for that. But if I go to the bathroom and pee, and I leave the toilet seat up, and my wife comes and sits down on the toilet and goes into the water, and it splashes and makes her butt all wet, she comes at me and she's pretty angry. And the argument would go something like this. How many times do I have to tell you to put down the toilet seat? And I say, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot. Sure. You say you forgot. I don't believe you're really that sorry, because if you were that sorry, you wouldn't have done it, because I've told you probably three or four, if not 10 times, maybe 50. And we can go back and forth on this over and over again. But what are we really fighting about? Some of you might say, well, you're fighting about Stuart. You should have put the toilet seat down. I would suggest to you that's not the fight. That might be what it looks like. If you came into my house, those would be the words that might be going back and forth. I would suggest the real fight 
is, are you there for me? Do I matter to you? And that my wife's internal dialogue about this would be, if he cared, he would have remembered. Now, if there is a basic disconnect, she might, if you pulled her aside and had a conversation with her, took her out for a cup of coffee somewhere, she'd probably say, I'm not convinced that I matter that much. And that the argument that we're having and the words that we should be using is about that. She should come when the toilet seat and her butt is all wet. She should come to me and say, I'm really upset because you forgetting putting down the toilet seat makes me doubt how much you love me. Coming at me in that type of vulnerable dialogue would change the nature of the conversation. The conversation becomes, let me reassure you how much you matter to me. The sorrow that my wife would hear from me and the pain and anguish that she would hear from me would be about how much I'm hurting that I haven't been able to give my wife a feeling of security and stability that there's no one else and nothing else that matters more. And if as we're sitting in this office, as the couple is sitting in my office, talking to me about this conflict, if the therapy is working well, the conversations we'll be having would be, do you have my back? If I need something from you, will you drop everything for me? Because nothing is more important than I am. So what emotionally focused therapy allows you to do is seek that kind of outcome. But in order to do that, there needs to be an emotionally safe place hopefully my office, where people can begin to talk about what happens internally when you and your partner are not getting along. So one of the questions that I often ask couples is, when things are not going well, what's it like for you? And I talk a lot. I actually do a weekend program called Two Days and Seven Conversations, They happen to be one of the sponsors of this podcast. And one of the things that we talk about during that weekend retreat is about your cycle, that relationships develop ongoing cycles, and the cycles become, we'll all probably relate to this, when we have the same fight over and over, but for different reasons. So what we have to begin to do is verbalize our internal dialogue with one another. And one of the things that does happen when you're caught up in your cycle, in this negative pattern of relating to one another, the most destructive part of a relationship, it's not the conflict. It's what doesn't get said that's more destructive than any conflict. It's the lack of healing It's the lack of repair. It's the lack of demonstrating to your partner that when you're not getting along, there's nothing more painful to you because internally in your head, cognitively, what happens is we begin to identify and think about our partners in such destructive ways. They don't even know this. Sometimes it does get externalized but it usually gets externalized in anger and viciousness and very destructive interactions, which then has walls going up for all of us. And we don't have a heart-to-heart talk about how you really view your partner. And one of the things to correct these negative patterns is we have to identify what are the thoughts and feelings that come up when things aren't going well for the two of you 
And can we find a way to talk about these, to identify them, and then work toward disproving this really awful negative perspective? And that doesn't happen in a safe way, in a healthy way, without having a therapist who is trained in an attachment model who can then talk about this, not in blaming ways, because you guys are the expert at times in blame. And if the therapist gets caught up in the same type of interaction, they can pull you guys even further apart. That's the danger. I have so many people who come to see me who have been to see other therapists that I have to undo all of these things because what happens is they come in to see me worried that I was going to take a side. I can't tell you how many people come in to see me as a counselor and what I usually hear is we picked you because you're a man because maybe my partner won't feel attacked. That suggests that somehow or other, I'm going to choose between the two of them who's right and who's wrong. I don't do that. I tell people on the front end, if you're here to have me tell you who's doing a better job at making this relationship work, you've got to go find someone else because I'm not doing that. One of the reasons I use emotionally focused therapy is it's the method in couples counseling that's research validated. A lot of guys like that. They want to read the research, and the research is out there. There's research and data to back up what we're doing. And it's a tested approach. And what's so thrilling and makes it so much more fun for me, because in the past I did and worked with other models, and I remember to this day, before I found out about EFT, I was ready to quit and do construction or something other than counseling. Because I kept seeing couples coming through my door over and over and over again, the same couples. And I like to say, it was good for my pocketbook or my bank account, but horrible for me as a man who went into this field to help others. And I saw very clearly, if people kept coming back, am I really helping them? Because then we're putting band-aids on. And I don't want to put band-aids on anything. It's true. You don't have to give up on your relationship or settle for feeling lost or as if something is missing. You just need to know how to connect with your partner in a way that allows the two of you to feel loved and appreciated. But the problem is that many couples don't have the tools they need to navigate the ups and downs of a relationship without causing relationship injuries to one another. Yet they wonder what happened to the friendship, the friendship that you used to share. How did it get from where it was in the beginning of the relationship to where you are now, feeling alone, disappointed, and hurt? And yet, you just can't seem to move forward to be happy again. Thankfully, This problem can be fixed, and that's where the two days and seven conversation Hold Me Tight workshop comes in. Just two days, you will understand what you and your partner need to have a relationship where both of you are on the same page, working together to have that close relationship you only once dreamed of. Check it out at www.thecouplesexperts.com. Your relationship deserves the two of you feeling that closeness you once had. The exciting thing is EFT is a roadmap. There is a clear map of how do we go from point A to point B. The success rate for EFT is astronomically high. And people will even say, don't quote the statistics. Because number one, people don't believe you. And number two, someone's going to come back and say, oh, my God, you said that the success rate on this was about 70 to 75 percent. Well, we've been meeting for a while and we're not there. So obviously you lied. Well, you know what? 
I don't know what to do about that. Because statistics are statistics, research is research. But 70 to 75 percent success rate of people who stick with this come out of EFT with an improved relationship, talking that I like to say you've moved from living on this earth and now you've moved continents and living in attachment land. Attachment land with attachment language. If we go on a cruise and you go into Germany, most of you will get books. Most of you will want to learn how to speak German. Because if you have to go to the bathroom, you want to know how to say that. But how many of us study attachment language, our partner's language, so that you're communicating in their tongue? And I would suggest part of what happens in EFT and attachment-based models is that you begin to speak each other's language and you speak the language of attachment land. And then you begin to do that successfully. And that's why the success rate is so high. One of the reasons. That's not research validated. That's Fensterheim validated. Because when you speak attachment language and why that works so well is because you're talking about the real issues, the real problems, the real needs, our attachment needs, which is why even if people drop out of counseling, the research has shown, even if you drop out, couples report their language continues to be improved and they feel much happier about their relationship. And some of that is because As I talked about earlier, EFT is experiential in nature. So we have these experiences in the office, such as the example I gave a few minutes ago had to do with my leaving the toilet seat up. If you could have the dialogue about, do I matter to you? What begins to happen is there's a change that occurs in the office you begin to have a deeper understanding of one another and a change in how you define your relationship to your partner. And does your partner see you as the most important thing in the world to them? And in how do you develop that vulnerable dialogue that proves or disproves that negative perspective that you have about your partner and your relationship because of all the conflicts? So once you do that, you begin to feel better, and the two of you come at this problem as teammates. The two of us work against the true enemy, which is your cycle. And I tell people what they have to do is externalize the cycle. The cycle is a way that we perceive what happens in the interaction But I would suggest if you could see your cycle as an alien from another planet and that unless the two of you work together as teammates, your cycle will win. You've basically allowed your enemy to invade your homeland and say, here's the secret weapon of how to destroy us, as opposed to we're fighting you. Two of us against you, there's no way that you're going to win because we have the secret weapon, which is our love and connection to one another. So what begins to happen is you begin to see in my office some changing that happens in the nature of the relationship. And then someone will come back later, a couple weeks, and come to see me very frustrated Because I hear something like, why is it not that way at home? If he could do it here, why can't he do it at home? This isn't working. And then they want to either drop out or do something different in terms of the counseling. And what I will tell all of you listeners, my community, is that EFT first will work in the office. The change needs to happen in the office for weeks and weeks and weeks at a time with positive interactions and positive ways to deal with conflict. 
and then it might change at home. But part of my role is to speak what's not spoken, to define for each of you the true meaning of what's going on in the language. That's helping you learn the attachment land language. So without me or a therapist present, the patterns of relating continue and they will always win until you begin to change the negative interactions. This model will work for just about any problem. We have seen it work with post-traumatic stress disorder, with medical issues, with infidelity, with most every problem that you can imagine. Parenting, there's only two types of issues that prevent EFT from being able to be used. And that's if there's active domestic violence, because we're not going to have people get vulnerable with one another if there's the possibility of physical danger. And if there's an active substance abuse problem, that will be too strong to combat. So if someone's in treatment for substance abuse, we can do it. But if they're actively using drugs or alcohol, this model is not going to be helpful. So one of the things to keep in mind is that some people might say, but what about the individual issues that someone might have? What I would suggest, if your partner is turning to you and saying, you have to work on this, that's getting interpreted as blaming. For most couples that I have seen that have issues of depression, issues of anger, issues of just about any issue, when we're working as a couple, that doesn't mean we don't work on the individual issues. We sure do. But it's generally not done with anyone pointing a finger and saying, you have to work on this. What I see more often than not, what comes up is... Someone saying, I would like to work on this because what ends up happening is the relationship feels so good that who would want to be that person that would be responsible for getting in the way of the relationship being something incredibly special? And that's generally what happens. The other philosophy that I work under is People ask me about individual counseling for themselves or their partner, and I usually say I don't recommend it at all unless there is some type of true pathology going on. And then generally what I'll do is I'll refer that to another therapist because I want to be the couple's counselor. But sometimes there are issues of depression. I had a client recently that talked about being suicidal. And you might say, oh my gosh, you should see that person individually. And, maybe, and sometimes I have done that. But more often than not, I choose not to do that. And the reason I choose not to do that is I believe very strongly that there's nothing more valuable than your partner understand you thoroughly and completely and this is going to be sort of a statement that some of you might absolutely disagree with me. And if you do, I want to hear from you, please. Please email me at podcasts at thecouplesexperts.com. And let's have a dialogue about this. Is all the individual work could be done in the presence of your partner? Because what would be more valuable than your partner being able to be the best therapist you ever had. So often I hear from people, what do you mean your husband or wife can be your therapist? I would suggest that there's nobody in the entire world, including the best counselor out there, who would be the better therapist than someone who's building a life with you. That doesn't mean they have the skills necessary to help you all the time. But if the trust is there, the love is there, if the commitment is there, if you go all in in a relationship, who would be more committed to helping you than they would be? 
if there needs to be some knowledge base that you don't have, the two of you could seek it out together. Could either find a therapist if you choose to, or go online and do some research, or go to classes, or read books, or do the things that are necessary to help you have that partner feel better about themselves. And I always go back to Kelly Clarkston's song, Piece by Piece, in which she talks about the traumas as a child and feeling abandoned by her father and meeting a man, her current husband, who has changed the nature of how she views men and how she views her dad and how she views her past because her present is so damn good. That's what our partner as therapist becomes, the conduit for changing the way we view the world. The thing to keep in mind, EFT, Emotionally Focused Therapy, deals in the emotions. When you're learning how to interact with your partner in a new way, don't forget the element of humor and the power of playfulness in bringing you closer together. When we're stuck in those negative interactions, we can be the ambassador for gloom and doom and the philosophy that there's no way to live and be happy. Be prepared to bring happiness back in your lives through a positive emotional experience. And what's more positive than fun? If you're in the midst of these struggles and the challenges, you have to convince yourself that it's not hopeless. The only people that don't get where they want to be are the ones that give up. I want you all to please remember something. There's help out there. There are many counselors who specialize in EFT and attachment-based counseling. Don't let the fear keep you from making the most important decision, which is if you're stuck in your negative cycles, get help before it's too late. Okay, EFT is not a mystery. One of the things that I pride myself is on authenticity and vulnerability. And I'm very vulnerable of what I'm doing, why I'm doing it, and I lay it out. It's not a guessing game. You're not going to wonder why I've done what I've done. I'm going to tell you why I've done what I've done, because that's what we have. We have a roadmap that's going to tell you the reason that we do it and why this is going to work. It is a path to success. There's not a whole lot of homework that you'll be given. Because as I said previously, the change will happen in the experience in the office. Sometimes we do a little bit of communication skills. But for the most part, the change happens in the office. And when you begin to really understand the map... Things start happening for the two of you. Sometimes I recommend in the beginning not to talk about the counseling sessions because of what will flare up in the negative interactions, and that can be hard for folks. But again, my role is to speak what's not being spoken to prevent the walls from coming up. So one of the things that I do need to stress is that you need to really Follow the guidance of the counselor who is seeing the two of you. Okay. So in summary, I know this has been a lot. There may be a lot of questions you have, and please write me any questions you might have about this podcast because it's an important topic. It's really a foundation of all the things that we do. You have to understand attachment theory. EFT is designed to teach you what you need to do to have a successful relationship. You don't always need a counselor. That's where some of the weekend programs, the retreat that I do, the two days and seven conversation retreat. There's a couple of articles by Sue Johnson. And if you would like those articles, I'm going to put a link on the show notes for you to download those articles. These are going to be articles about EFT. The last comment I want to make before we stop today is remember something that we all need help every now and then. And that there's no shame in admitting that. And don't let your insecurity and questioning whether or not anything can help the two of you get in the way of picking up the phone and reaching out to someone. 
That's one of the reasons I offer a 30-minute free telephone consultation because I want people to really understand what we have to offer to help your relationship. And if I can get both of you on the phone, we begin to talk about that and the light bulb goes off that says, wow, maybe something can be different. Thank you for joining me again this week. I'm excited to keep this dialogue going on helping all of you have a incredibly close, connected relationship with your partners. And next week's podcast is a good sort of step two of this, which is about how our past keeps haunting us and echoing back in our relationships. And what can the two of you do to really change that from becoming a powerful influence on your relationship? So join me next week. And of course, please stay connected. Bye-bye now. Thank you for listening. This episode has ended, but your journey continues. Head over to www.thecouplesexperts.com to access all the links and resources mentioned in this episode, as well as bonus content exclusive to podcast listeners. Enjoyed this episode? Why not hit subscribe now and never miss an episode? 